We are here at Alton Park for round four of the Renault UK Clio Cup and this episode, episode uh, five of our series, if you haven't watched any of the, the early ones, go back, is, is all about the fans. So um, we're trying to have a behind the scenes look at different aspects of, of what it's like to be a racing driver and, and what the Renault Clio Cup is. And this weekend is going to be all about the fans. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys watching uh, this video are going to feature it. Right, here we are, we're about uh, just less than an hour to go before qualifying. Everybody's just getting a bit tense now, just ready for it. Uh, I'm just loading the, the uh, tyre trolley up with the tools and stuff, ready for pit lane. So we're going to make a bit of a change at half, halfway through, um, through qualifying. I've always had a massive passion for supercars, and I think racing is a, a natural progression from that sort of, the sort of competitive aspect of life. But I think the whole sort of family orientated team general sort of hospitality yes on them are quite like that you know, you're not it's not the commercialness you're not really from the team yeah so we've got the Clio qualifying coming up in, uh, in about half an hour I think it is the guys will be going down I think looking at it Pyro didn't look too strong yesterday in free practices um, but made a few changes and I think Max in particular is looking super strong he's been quick considering he's gone on older tyres so I think when he bolts new on and then we got a plan midway through the session uh, for Max as well see how he goes um, working quite closely and just asking what the guys are, are doing it sounds like Max might be one to watch as well as the other guys as well maybe Bradley Burns as well I think will be doing pretty well so it'll start in a bit and I'm sure the guys will be flat out and they're gonna go really well so good luck to them Saturday morning here at Alton Park. We are waiting to go out for qualifying in about two hours time. The touring cars have just gone out for their first practice and, and we had our practice yesterday. So we ended up, uh, I think, sixth past, fifth or sixth fastest overall yesterday. And so yeah, not, not a bad day at all, really. We, we feel like we've got a bit more pace in the bag. So I think the front row start is definitely possible for this afternoon. And yeah, for those that don't know, the way the Clio Cup works is your fastest time in qualifying qualifies you for race one, your second fastest time qualifies you for race two. So uh, sort of later on this morning, we want two fast laps uh, that's going to qualify us for the first race this afternoon, and then the second race live on ITV for tomorrow. Yeah, well, well done. with that late improvement 133.991 what might he have done with another flying lap had he had time uh, but fourth place 0.391 seconds away from James Dolan's time and that's a lot of his championship rivals around him in that yeah. second race ain't it Nicholas Hamilton 13th that's all right yeah that's pretty good please it's just a it's just a laugh in it it's just don't have any cares just like normally, because we come away with a big group of lads, don't we? And it's just the last weekend away without the missus. No stresses of work, no nothing. Exactly. If you get the nice weather, it's all right. We have just finished qualifying. We just had dinner in uh, the lovely Renault Hospitality Suite, done by these guys behind us. I don't know whether Damien can maybe pan round or not. Uh, they're getting theirs now. They're brilliant, they do a great job. So, yeah, we finished qualifying. Uh, just chilling out now before race one. We've qualified fourth and second. Uh, fourth this afternoon, second for tomorrow. Which is okay. We, I think we had the, the pace to definitely do P2, P2, but maybe even go better than that and, and maybe have a pole. So it was a little bit frustrating not to have done that. We, we tried changing something mid-session. Um, so we, we tried to change something on the rear camber of the car. Uh, which we did, 
but unfortunately it took a little bit longer. Essentially when, when we're doing it, the brakes are really hot and the guys have to take the, the rear braking part out, change something behind it and then put it all back together. And when we did that, the cloths that we were using to take break this off set on fire, which is what then essentially took us that little bit longer to get done. So I was waiting in pit lane for what, 10 minutes or something? Um, and then we, yeah, that was what we were waiting for and why I didn't get enough laps in on the second set of tyres. So yeah, we, we did uh, one flying lap on the second set of tyres. Most people probably did four. And I think that was really where our time was to, to find it. So yeah, a little bit frustrated. Um, I didn't have the best run through the chicane. Completely badgered the final corner. It's just too much of a, an oversteer. And unfortunately, that's, that's where the time went. So. Anyway, we're, we're on to the next one now and, and uh, fingers crossed. So, oh, we wanted to ask how I felt when I was in pit lane. To be honest, the worst thing is you don't, you, you don't have any information. So all you, you, you're sat in the car like that. You can move your legs a bit and you can move your arms like that, but you can't really move anything else. You don't know how long the session's left. You don't know what place you're in. You don't know what's going wrong with the car. All I know is that the, the back side of the car is jacked up like that and they're trying to do something. Um, and two of my friends were stood just in front of me and I was trying to give them sort of signals to say what is happening. Um, you know, what position am I? Who's in the other places? How long's left? Which they hardly understood because I'm trying to do it with like signals. Um, so yeah, I. I I wasn't overly happy to be sat there that long. That wasn't the plan, but that's what happens. Well, um, I grew up watching VTCC since a very young age, and I haven't been for a while, but this season I've got back into it, and yeah, we're back again at Alton Park, and then we're going to come back at Brands, and we're come back at Silverstone, and yeah, I just love VTCC, and the sport races, the Clio's, the Genetics, it's just better racing than Formula One. <laughs> I absolutely love it here. I, I, I don't know. I love going around, getting autographs off of, off of all the drivers, and it's just being it, close to the drivers and the cars that you wouldn't yeah. get at other events. It's yeah, and, of, and everyone's so friendly as well. And yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. But it's just good how he's like, he could be at the end of the garage, and then we just say Max, and he'll come over and chat to you, and he's not like any other drivers who sort of like keep themselves to themselves sort of thing. He always comes and says hello to the fans and you know, that's what's great. He always gives what, me hugs Yeah, and that's what's good about being, <laughs> that's what attracts us to Max really, because he, you know, anybody can give his time to and he's not, not arrogant or anything, he's a good chap, so good driver as well, so. Race, race prediction. Someone's going to crash, definitely. <laughs> uh, Top three. Top three, right? I'm going for Dorlin, Max Coates, Mike Epps. Top three. the first race and he's come in third which is brilliant really like that so I've got a friend of Max's here and um, what did you think of the race real good uh, race uh, again Max pushing for podiums which is great uh, absolutely loved uh, the way Max was pushing Rivette all the way uh, towards the end obviously tires may have gone off and lost 
time on Rivet, but third place, points in the bag, well done. I wanted to win it and we have the pace to win it, but we've just got to be able to get past the car in front. And unfortunately, he defended the whole race and was obviously trying to make me either make a mistake or whatever so that his teammate could get through from behind. But that's the, that's the one, of, one of them things, but another podium, P3 finish, so can't be too unhappy. Barbecue tonight, it's all good. <laughs> We are just about to go on a track walk with these guys. Uh, they are the Jeff Army. They're probably mini Jeff. So they're all called Jeff. They've all got their own little Jeff name. Uh, yeah, and they, they're just about to do a track walk. So we're going to go and join them and uh, see what goes on. Like when we were doing the when you were doing the qualifying, we heard you come in and you had an issue. Yeah, wow. for the foot, we, for we set cloths on fire. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we tried changing something with the cambers with, with the shims. It should have taken about five minutes, and we had two slight mess ups. One was um, one was that the cloths that they were using to stop stop them getting burnt set on fire. Yeah. And the second was that um, the we had it. There's a spacer in it somewhere. I don't really know where. That fell out, went under the car. So when they well, you say about us being back together, but I think I've got a new boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put you're you on to him. Bear with me. I'll put you on. Just speak Lindsay. Just speak to Lindsay. Is this Lindsay? Tell him we're a couple. Hey, is this? Is this mess up? Hey, Mrs. Coach. Hello, Martin. It's Linda. <laughs> Right, it's a funny story. It's not a funny here. story, is it? At Thruxton, yeah. what happened was we all went to bed with a gnome, yeah. and when we woke up, we didn't have one. It was, it was, there was no, but in, there was no in the gnome's belly, he had some sunglasses and a corkscrew, yeah. Yeah. which got sent to me for cool delivery. Uh, okay. so had yeah. So I've got the inside of Jeff back. It's like a proof of life, that's where well, I look okay. at it. So I've got inside of Jeff back, but I haven't got the gnome. 